wow, what is this? Some sort of purgatorial liminal space? No, this is just regular West Virginia. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, the only way to escape is to watch and explain the Silent Hill movie from 2006. Yeah, yeah, I'll do anything. First thing we see is a bunch of underclothed, sexy parents running through the woods screaming for a Sharon. Sharon! Hot Mommy eventually ends up at one of those deep chasm waterfalls that you always find located about 12 feet from major roads. And notices her nine year old daughter standing on the ledge looking weird. Then the waterfall dissolves into those Isengard pits where they grow uruk high. <laughs> Though I don't know if anybody can see that except maybe the daughter who is also down there too but looking eviler. Also, Sharon won't stop screaming about Silent Hill, whatever the hell that means. And her dad is Boromir. We'll find a way through this. We'll find a way. He didn't. <laughs> That's the intro, you're welcome. Aren't you glad you clicked on this video? Yes. No. Anyway, on a different day, Sharon sits against a tree in a brightly lit field drawing shit, and her mom is like, oh, are you drawing shit here in this brightly lit field? I almost didn't even see you there drawing shit in this brightly lit field. What are you doing there, pumpkin? Did I say you could stop painting, bitch? And Sharon meows a lot. Meow. Hey. <laughs> meow. Hey. That, what is that? <sighs> like more than is necessary. Meow. 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 Objection, she's not a cat, your honor. <sighs> and the mom is like, hey, we're actively on the very trip I'm about to mention, but hey, Sharon, did you remember that special trip that will hopefully help you with your sleepwalking thing? And she's like, yes, I remember that. We're on the trip. I don't know why you phrased it that way. You know we're going on a special trip, don't you? Yeah. Here's a judgy sign. You, sir. Vormir is not on this trip because the last time he went on a big trip, he did not get very far. But he does check a ghost town's website to learn. Ah, oh, shit. There's a Silent Hill, West Virginia. Oh, well, shit. Which I guess is where they're going. Don't see how that will help her more than going to a psych ward. But to be fair, every time Dave says something I don't like, I drop him off at an abandoned ghost town for a week, and it seems to cure him of even being able to speak. Hey? Daddy's not thrilled by this and tries to cancel their credit cards because one does not simply walk into West Virginia. Your card was declined. Check me, bitch. But shockingly, it doesn't work. One day, science will find a way to keep people out of West Virginia, but not today. It is not this day. They stop at a gas station where a sexy lady cop is like, I don't know about these two. I wonder if the child is abducted. I mean, maybe. And so the cop follows and then tries to pull them over, but totally innocent hot mommy speeds away at a million miles per hour, slamming through fences and eventually crashing when she maybe sees another kid in the road? Keep your seatbelt fastened, honey. Because I'm innocent. I too commit violent car felonies whenever I'm trying to help my kids with their sleepwalking. And believe me, that's a lot of violent car felonies because I have three children, two of whom can walk in their sleep. They all sleep, but only two can walk. So really, worst case scenario, there are only two sleepwalking that require violent car felonies to cure uh, of. Sign up for my Patreon to pay for my murderous vehicle rampage legal fees so I can keep helping my children. Objection. Anyway, hot mommy smacks her noggin so hard she passes out. And when she wakes up, the sky is just shitting ash everywhere. Also, Sharon is gone. Oh, but maybe her sleep is cured? If so, worth it. You know, leave and cleave. You gotta let those kids grow up eventually. Mommy wanders through the abandoned town of Silent Hill, West Virginia, just in case there are any hot cousins around for her to marry, which, hey, fun fact, it's actually illegal to marry your first cousin in West Virginia. You know where it is legal to marry your first cousin? Regular Virginia, baby! High five, Dave! Let's go! Let's go marry some cousins, Dave! Hey, look! Someone's attractive cousin! Man, I tell you what, every time we film one of these, Dave has married a new cousin. That's why we had so many toaster ovens for the Terminator video. He just keeps getting them as wedding presents from his aunts slash mothers-in-law. Dave's family tree is really more like a telephone pole. Don't like, don't like that. Nah, Dave. That's why we all came to Virginia. Our ancestors, our cousins, came here and uh, they, they populated this place with their cousins. Whose land is this? Anyway, hot mommy sees a girl run around again and chases her down a flight of stairs, but then an air raid siren goes off and things get super dark, both literally and figuratively. That's a metaphor. That's a metaphor! Uh, Mommy uses a lighter to see that she's somewhere that's serving major wet warehouse vibes, and she hears the kid again. 
And I think this movie is basically like Mad Max Fury Road if the tanker was a small child and a Morton Joe was also on foot and a hot mommy instead of just chasing a hot mommy in a tanker. Can you track that metaphor? I'm saying there's a big hot mommy intersection between the two movies. That's mine! Hot mommy. But before hot mommy can get to the kid, she finds a gored out minor guy who isn't fully dead and a bunch of weird burning toddlers who rip off some of her clothes. <laughs> What a hot mommy. Eventually, they just sort of burn away and the light returns and we're back in regular old Asheville. It's apparent that we're dealing with some sort of upside down scenario here where occasionally the darkness takes over and bowling alleys look extra evil and burned babies start crawling around, but only temporarily. Sort of like most bowling alleys. Do not go into an AMF Kegler's after like 8 p.m. <laughs> Anyway, she wanders some more and bumps into a creeper lady who is like, I've also lost my daughter. We've all lost our children. What are the odds? Well, in a bowling alley, very high. <laughs> Boromir, by the way, spends most of the movie driving around and looking for his hot mommy of a maybe first cousin wife and also his daughter, but not too hard. Because yikes, have you seen the prices of college tuition these days? I mean, if he finds her, great, but if not, we're gonna keep that money. And he does actually make it into Silent Hill, escorted by some other cop. But this version of Silent Hill seems much less ashy. Still sh**ly sure, but much closer to a sepia town thing than a full grayscale thing. So apparently we are dealing with three levels of existence here. All Boromir basically learns is that Sharon is adopted. I mean, I guess we learned that. I assume he already knew that. And that Sharon originally came from Silent Hill and was originally named Alessa. This is why I refuse to adopt anything besides sentient talking mice. Look, he's already happy to see me. And the cop is constantly like, dude, just leave it alone. It's fine. Don't worry about it. All right, all right. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. And Boromir mostly does what he's asked to do, which is nothing. One does nothing. Although at one point he smells his wife maybe as she runs around in the underworld, so... <laughs> I don't know, just know that that's going on in the background of the rest of the movie. Hey, fun fact, the writer of this movie helped write Pulp Fiction and won the Academy Award for Best Screenplay. And given everything he's worked on since, I'm starting to think that Tarantino is maybe a bit more responsible for that script. Well, I just reject your hypotheses. But anyway, mommy gets back to her car, but it doesn't work, and the sexy lady cop shows up and is like, hey, hot mommy, you're under arrest. And mommy's like, for what? Saying what? anything you say, what the hell be used for? To and the answer is evading the police, you lunatic. Not to mention suspected kidnapping or child trafficking. And in case you're wondering why she wasn't arrested earlier, the cop also crashed and got knocked out. She was sleeping on the job, basically. Cracked my head on the road pretty good when my bike went down. Fuck you, stupid cop. They try to leave, but the road sort of runs out, dropping into oblivion, which is less than ideal, and also would suggest that actually they're in Atlanta. The billowing black smoke could be seen for miles. A creepy thing shows up and pukes acid on the cop, forcing her to remove some of her clothes, which I guess means the porno I'm writing is now obsolete. <laughs> is that piss? And also it allows Hot Mommy to escape. Still handcuffed though, which seems like a bad idea since the cop has the gun and the handcuff keys, but also would be willing to help her find her daughter. Like why does she distrust this cop so much? If she just talked to her instead of peddling it to the metal, she wouldn't be in this purgatorial hellscape right now. But whatever, she finds a map and she checks out a school inside which she looks for things. Papers, keys, you know, things. <laughs> Not sure what she's hoping to find, but this flashlight will probably be useful if she ever finds herself in hell and or a bowling alley again. She finds a desk with some witch handprints and a weird flashback to Alessa getting bullied, which I don't understand the timeline because the town has been shut down for 30 years, but Sharon was dropped off as a baby presumably nine years ago. So had she just been a baby for 21 years? Yeah. Hey. Is that your thing, Dave? Is that why you're such a little whiny bitch always asking for milk? It's because you've been a baby for 33 years? Are you 33? I'm 33. God. Yeah. You were so old. 32, I'm spry. I don't know, but there's the g girl, probably Alessa again. So mommy chases her again and does the stall kick in thing in a bathroom until she finds the aftermath of the worst shit of all time. Just brutal what went down in there. It was like barbed wire and stuff. I don't know what happened in there. Damn! 
You saved my battle shit! But she pulls something out of the dead dude's mouth, because why wouldn't she? And as she leaves, she runs into some old-timey coal miners who try to get to her, but they give up when their literal coal mine canary starts flipping out, and the it's all about to become evil siren goes off again. And then yeah, everything transforms to be shittier, and there's a freaky dead dude bound feet to head. And people getting eaten by bugs and shit. And I guess Alessa is there looking weird, and there's also a dude with a pyramid for a head wandering around. There he is. And I'm gonna be honest, I think I would just go ahead and die at this point. It is too much, it is too weird, my brain would break, and I'd die, and bonus, I'd never have to pay taxes. My family could cash in my life insurance, and maybe we'd all learn the meaning of Christmas! That's right. That's right. But no. She's dragged away by Lady Cop, and it turns out that the cockroaches have little faces. That legally makes them people, meaning they probably have to pay taxes. <laughs> Sucks for them. Hope they at least learn the meaning of Christmas. Money, money. But I doubt it. They lock themselves in a room, and there's a massive scraping sound, and the cop is like... You hear that? Did you hear that? Yes. She heard the incredibly loud sound, officer. But right then, Pyramid Head stabs through the door with an impractically large blade and goes absolutely berserk. It's like his head is in the clouds and he's having some internal strife. Sephiroth. Man, if there was ever a time to not be busty, it would be this time. But eventually he gives up as nature heals, so it's okay to be busty again. Thank God. <laughs> All right. We're gonna be okay. They analyze the thing that mommy pulled from that dead dude's mouth and decide it's from the local hotel. It's the key. So they go there while some surprisingly sexy music bumps. And they find a woman named Anna throwing rocks at the other weirder mommy from earlier. Yay! And they're like, whoa, calm down, ladies. And Anna is like, well, this woman was cast out from whatever weird-ass religious cult I'm a part of, thus rocks. It's that! Also, I'm here looking for food for mother. Mother needs more. Pussy! Oh, and this symbol on the ground is the symbol of us and also maybe our elders' elders, who we probably can't marry here in West Virginia, but might, it might be fine to marry them across the border in sexy Virginia, which, as we all know, is for lovers. Lovers of elders. Virginia is for... The old words we not only see, but feel. Sometimes I say the things that I wrote out loud, and I just hope that people can track, because I can't track as I'm saying it. I don't know what you're talking about. The anyway, they explore the hotel with Anna in tow because I guess that makes more sense than interrogating her to figure out what the hell is actually going on. And also, weird mommy buggered off somewhere, and they mostly just discover a hidden room that almost certainly doesn't meet code. And also her daughter, again, I guess. But it's not really her daughter, and also she's burning? I'm burning. I just said that! Double also, mommy has been wearing her cell phone on a chain around her neck the whole movie. That must be something from the games, right? No way they came up with that for the movie. Anna says a bunch of culty nonsense bullshit about the darkness coming. The darkness is coming! <laughs> and she recommends they hide in the town church. I guess all the birds hate the darkness too. Get the fuck out of here! Wait. And oh look at that, the air raid siren comes from the church and there are actually a bunch of people running inside, including this creepy lady in charge. Hello. And the weird mom is there too, and they talk to her about how they might have the same daughter, but like, maybe they should talk inside? Rose, hurry! You stupid idiot! The world's going to shit? And yeah, Pyramid Head shows up and rips off Anna's clothes. <laughs> and skin. <laughs> <laughs> That's one step too many. You had me in the first half, but then you pushed it just a little too far. But I guess Dave has already grabbed some salad dressing, so half a point, I guess. He's not slowing down. Just jacking it. They finally run inside the church, and the people are like, these chicks are witches! Which is why I'm wearing the hat. Yeah, now it makes sense, right? Yes. No. Uh, but their queen is like, nah, I doubt that they're witches. Anyway, what can I do for you? And mommy is like, I'm trying to find my daughter. And the woman is like, ooh. Only the demon knows where she is. It's great. It's great. It's great. Yeah. So I guess we'll take you to the demon. So they walk to the demon building, and the queen is like, just so you know, this demon sometimes looks like a little girl. But as long as you have faith, it's no biggie. Step in this evil elevator. Hey, I'm sure it'll be totally fine. Let me do this. But before they can begin their new adventure to the demon, Queen notices a picture of Mommy's daughter and is like, Oh, shit. That's Alessa. Y'all are witches. 
Witch! It's a bug. But Lady Cop beats the shit out of everybody and gets Mommy to the elevator and then literally descends her to hell. <laughs> then Lady Cop reveals that, lol, she actually doesn't have any bullets. So the cultists beat the shit out of her. I don't know why she didn't just pretend that she did have bullets, so they'd let her escape, but I guess that'd be a whole other scene, and this movie already has a lot of scenes. She's just trying to help me out now. So helpful, this cop. Also, I can't remember who says it or where, but these people burn witches, right? That's their whole thing. They hate witches, so they burn them. Just like how I hate Dave's, and I burn them after each shoot. This is like our hundredth Dave over here. I found your secret room. And you know what? I think I'm gonna have to burn him after this. Should be pretty easy considering you're smothered in vinaigrette. I'm burning. But okay, mommy's in hell now, and she runs into a pack of sexy nurses. Not bad, this hell. Oh no, they've all got scalpels, and they're attracted to light, and they want to murder her. That's bad. Well, shit. Fortunately, Mommy sneaks through them and enters a door into a pure white room of exposition and flashback. So, okay, here's the deal, as best I can tell, explained in my famously clear way. So there was once this bastard girl named Alessa that everybody made fun of because of the whole bastard thing, and to make matters worse, and the script more rated M for mature, she was raped by the school janitor, and then the queen lady was like, all right, Alessa's mom named Dahlia, look, there's a lot of sin going on here, and we just gotta purify it all by setting your kid on fire. And Dahlia's like, well, if you say so, I guess that makes sense, but as they take her kid away to be set on fire, she has some doubts, and she calls the cops, who do arrive in time to save Alessa, but not before a, she's burned all the shit, and B, the fire thing accidentally gets overturned, and somehow that fire gets to the coal under the town, and now the coal under the town has been burning for decades, which is why it's abandoned. And this is why you never have ritualistic witch burning ceremonies over exposed coal veins. My grandma used to say that, I just think you suck. And am I crazy, or does this whole setup between the bastards and the sexual assault and the setting little girls on fire and Sean Bean all have a real, like, a Game of Thrones vibe? Not today. Like me at the last season of Game of Thrones, Alessa gets pretty peeved about the whole being set on fire thing. You thought I was going to talk about how at the end of Game of Thrones I was disappointed, but no, I was set on fire. I don't know. What's the joke there? One of my cousins was over, and I tried to do some stuff, and they set me on fire. Can we use that? Not today. The f are you talking about? I don't know. There is only one God, and his name is John C. I had to do it! I had to do it! I had to do it! She's so peeved, in fact, that her soul splits into a dark part, which is the weird girl we've been chasing and who is somehow responsible for all the shifting dimensions of Silent Hill, and a nice part. That's Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. who is taken to the real world to be adopted. Even though, again, it is, the, the only way this makes sense is if it either took Alessa like 21 years or so for her soul to split, and I guess when it split, it became a baby, or if Sharon was a baby for like ever. I mean, none of this makes sense, but I just don't understand why the timeline is so confusing. I guess that's what happens when you set girls on fire. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's why I don't do it anymore. Wait, what was that last part? So anyway, Alessa wants hella revenge, but unfortunately, she can't get into the church, which is why... It, that's where everybody hides during the dark times. So mommy lets her enter her body, I guess? Sort of a Trojan horse thing. And hey, if Alessa is the demon, why would the queen lady let hot mommy go meet her? Even if she didn't know the demon was Alessa or that the mommy was related to the demon somehow, why would she, a religious fanatic, want anybody to go meet a literal demon? What was she getting out of this deal? I realized that she changed her mind when she realized that she was Alessa's adoptive mother or whatever, but again, what was the original thought process? Maybe I'm overthinking this and she's just a jerk? But no, that's crazy. Religious people are never awful. Yeah, I guess you're right. You are destroyed forever? I don't know, but apparently Sharon has been chilling at Dahlia's house this whole time, and the two of them are grabbed by old-timey coal miners and taken to the church where, hey, cop lady is also, because I guess she didn't die. It's okay. Your mom is coming. And they're like, all right, we need to just start over and set everybody on fire. So first, they slow roast the cop. Barbecue! But before they can slow roast Sharon, Mommy shows up and says a bunch of nonsense, final monologue bullshit, and the cultists react how I wish I could. I come from a world full of- And also, I think it's revealed that these people all think they're living in the post-apocalypse, but Mommy has somehow learned that no, they're all dead, actually. They're what? 
was no apocalypse! We're dead? I mean, they could become more dead if a man with a pyramid for a head rips off their clothes and then their skin, but even without that, they're still dead. And also, they still have to eat, as evidenced by Anna scavenging for food? This is the worst death ever. I bet they also have to pay death taxes and all their Christmases are devoid of meaning. Quiet, quiet. The queen, she gets bored and she stabs the mom, but her blood lets Dark Alessa out, I think, and she opens up a portal to hell or whatever. Which lets burned Alessa, which is, I guess, the third. There's three Alessas now, and she comes out of the ground, but she's still tethered to her hospital bed and looking rough. Oh, girl, you nasty. And she's also sporting just about a million razor wires, which she uses to kill everybody, including the queen's taint. I mean, she is right up there. I've got a lich. You messed up. Mommy grabs Sharon and covers her eyes and tells her not to look. Shut your eyes. But I think she's already seen plenty. <laughs> not sure what difference it'll make at this point. Whatever happens, you're mortgaging your house five times over to pay for the kids' therapy bills anyway, so at least let her enjoy the show. You messed up. But then the chaos ends and Dolly is still alive and is like, that's wacky. I was sure that she would kill me too since I was her mom and I let her get burned. But Mommy is like, actually, the theme of this movie is motherhood. Because you're her mother. And so they walk away. And then the car works and they drive off the edge of the cliff, which apparently was just an optical illusion, a la Indiana Jones. <laughs> Except everything is still suspiciously ashy. And yeah, even when they get home, it turns out that they're stuck in Middleburg or whatever, and Boromir can sort of sense their presence, but he's for sure living on a different plane of existence. But maybe he can smell them? End of movie! What? Yeah, that wasn't very good. I'm actually gonna rip your clothes off and then your skin off. Well, then I'm gonna run away! You meow too much, and you've created a thing that the internet is gonna use. Not how you hope. Mm-mm.